Good afternoon, and a very sunny afternoon it is, appropriate for having two solar energy guests today. Think, look outside and think how many kilowatt hours are being produced. Just bam, bam, bam. And fortunately, most of those kilowatt hours are going into storage, which is the type of thing we'll be talking about today. I'm Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. June 20th, 2022. I guess today are from Revolution. Any local resident probably knows that name very well. They're the largest solar company in Hawaii. And incidentally, we are not, neither Think Tech Hawaii nor the state of Hawaii is endorsing Revolution. They are here for educational purposes. So thank you very much for appearing, Tom Corey and Scott Wishart, to talk about solar energy in Hawaii. And just as a little background, I go back quite a ways to the year 1976. Yes, solar energy did uh, exist back then, and it started in the backyard of Cully Judd, of the Judd family, and he and his dad were in the backyard building two, or, or building solar water heating panels, and they formed their own company, and it was by far the first solar energy company in Hawaii, and back then it was strictly solar water heating. Fortunately, they really pushed, and other companies, such as Revolution, joined and joined and joined, and again, focus on solar water heating, which is very, very fortunate because you heat up that water on a nice sunny day like this, and it goes into a tank, and I call that tank an 80-gallon battery. Why? Because we have our peak demand in the evening, just when the sun goes down, and when everybody went home and turned on the dishwasher and got into the showers, guess what they benefited from? All that stored up energy. That was the original battery technology for Hawaii. Then we evolved into uh, photovoltaic or PV cells. And we, it was so successful, is so successful, thanks partially to revolution, that the production of electricity in the middle of the day far exceeded the demand. So there were different uh, relationships between the solar companies and the utility, and it has finally come out to emphasis on storage. Get all those beautiful kilowatt hours that are going on in the middle of the day, store them up and apply them to the evening hours when the peak demand occurs. <laughs> Why would peak demand occur in the evening? Number one, everybody's coming home from the, their schools and their businesses, and the homes are beginning to go great guns. And we belong to a tourist economy. And if you haven't figured it out yet, tourism is back loud and clear. It's almost at 100% again. Guess what those tourists do? They go out to the beach to shopping tours in the middle of the day, and they come back when? Just when the sun is setting, and they contribute to the peak demand in the evening. So that is a little bit of background. So why don't we bring up the first, oh, and I didn't mention my guest name, Tom Corey and Scott Wishart of, again, Revolution. And uh, let's bring up the first slide, and either of you gentlemen, take it away. One of you, take it away, please. Uh, thanks, Howard. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for having Tom and I today, Howard. Really appreciate that. And um, we talked a little bit about the solar coaster, as many people call it, in the industry. And you're absolutely right. We can never, we can never forget about you know the hard work that Cully Judd and many others had done. You know previous to when the solar industry, where when the PV market got a little bit crazy or busy. And uh, we just show right here on this slide, 2009 was our inception. 
Uh, Tom and I have been lucky enough to be a part of the Revolucent team for almost since the inception, but we'll be coming up on our 13th year birthday this next month. Uh, but 2009 uh, was the early adopters. That was a lot of people that took advantage of the tax credits for federal and state at that time and put a PV system up on their roof. And net energy metering really kind of coasted us through that time period uh, all the way up until you know, 2015 when that was when net energy metering more or less was abolished. Uh, that was actually October. I believe it was October 13th of 2015. So that was a date that we kind of, that remains in infamy with us uh, in the solar industry. So at that point in time, a lot of companies, including us, we had to kind of redirect what we were doing. Uh, and at that time, uh, Revolucent brought in, um, we started doing a lot of smart home uh, things that we did as far as air conditioning and, and different things that um, you know you could model to make the house a little bit more take a little bit more of a holistic approach to making that house healthier and being able to capitalize on uh, energy efficiency at the house. So then you fast forward to where we are now uh, from you know 2017 to the present, and it's just been an amazing time for the PV industry. And batteries has really had a big, a, a big, a big part in that. And I think what we'll be talking about today is some of the programs right now with uh, with HECO that you know, we're looking at battery bonus. And there's another one through Swell called Battery Rewards. So I don't wanna say too much about the solar coaster without handing it over to Tom so he can kind of fill in some of the gaps there. Well, let, let me interrupt and say that I recently heard from Hawaiian Electric that I believe there are something like 92,000 PV systems on roofs in little old Hawaii and Hawaiian Electric is not at all satisfied with that. They want another 50,000 up on roofs by the year 2030. And that all has to do with Hawaii's transition towards 100% clean energy. Ideally, we will be burning four building, homes and buildings, zero fossil fuel by that time to combat global warming. And I, you mentioned storage. Just offhand, what percentage of the systems that you put up today include storage in them? 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. My project projects anyway. Yeah, yeah 99 to 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, had, I, had, I had read somewhere, Howard, some companies had said somewhere maybe around 80% or so. But yeah, I think Tom's spot on. I would say almost 100% of the installs we do right now are with batteries. But there is, there is some instances where that may not be needed on a house, depending on, on- On my side, the I'm with the Hawaii State Energy Office and we're pushing solar farms. And there's no such thing as a new solar farm without a commensurate uh, battery farm. We got to store up those BTUs in the middle of the day and apply them towards night. So why don't we uh, go to the next slide and one of you guys can ta take over from there. What's all this about guys? Outages. Uh, I'm not sure, Scott. What's this one about? So, <laughs> more, well, this just kind of lays into what you were saying, Howard, as far as um, you know, battery backup and where the industry is going. And a lot of homeowners have you know re really grasped this. I mean, I think we're ahead of the spear here in Hawaii. I mean, I really feel like we're about five or ten years ahead of some other states in the nation in what's happening out here. And a lot of that has to do with Hawaiian Electric Company. So. Uh, you know, with these battery programs, and you had mentioned there's about 50,000, you know, houses out there that have rooftop solar or 90,000, 92 to be exact. Mm -hmm. yeah. But HECO wants to bring in another 50,000 and batteries are going to be the way that we can do that. And that's for the first time, we're, we're sort of there technology wise, where now not only is the homeowner going to save money on a monthly basis with having a battery or batteries at the house, but they're also going to have that peace of mind that if the grid does go down or power does go out, they're going to be able to provide electricity for their family. Yeah, and for those out there listening and watching that don't know, Kiko used to have a program called Net Energy Metering, where you really wouldn't need a battery to power your home at night. So since they stopped doing that, 
um, that's why that's the main reason why we're installing batteries now is because you know during the day all your power comes from the PV that's powering your home and at the same time it's filling up this battery so as soon as the sun goes down you're running off battery power and that just happens every day uh, the backup element is just kind of secondary it's great people love that you know your lights will stay on you won't even see a flicker but uh, the main reason again is to power your home at night these batteries they're essential now you have to have them and let me uh, do a little more background. In September of this month, or this year, which is not many months away, our coal-fired plant out in Campbell Industrial Park will officially close. And that accounts for, I believe it's up to 20% of all Oahu's energy. That's going to be a huge, huge, huge impact. And what's more, we in the energy code business are shooting for 100% electrification of homes and buildings. So we're doing everything we can to increase electricity going into those structures. Plus, electric vehicles are coming on like gangbusters. And you, so you're going to have all this additional draw on the electrical load to get those nice electric vehicles batteries going how in the world are you guys going to do all of this maybe the next slide will explain it good question <laughs> that's uh that's kind of the idea behind kiko's battery bonus program is uh instead of building another plant or more plants i, I believe the coal power plant was producing what 50 megawatts per year so it was a lot of power um, so to make up for that loss in generation, that's what they're doing with this battery bonus program. You know, we're tapping into folks' batteries, and why not? There's literally thousands of these on homes around Hawaii, so it, it's kind of a win-win. You know, it is a win-win. You know, the homeowner uh, gets paid uh, to let Hiko tap into the battery, and then um, Hiko doesn't have to build another coal plant, which is obviously dirty. You know, they're using renewable energy from the sun. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a great deal, you know, and that and that's why the battery bonus program, that's why we're doing it. And what, what was going on with that slide that we just saw? Oh, by the numbers. <clears throat> so what we were just trying to show here, Howard, was that you can see exponentially the amount of batteries that are being installed is, is going up. And just to kind of dovetail a little bit on what Tom was saying with battery bonus, it's an amazing program. It looks like HECO is going to be making some changes to that. Actually, almost a year to the date. It looks like in uh, June of uh, 2023 or June 20th, 2023 will be when they may stop taking applications or if it's already hit the 50 megawatts that they want to pull in. So there's three tranches. There's a first tranche of 15 megawatts, second tranche of another 15 megawatts, and then a last tranche of 20 megawatts. So the credit, the payment will go down over time. So it's a great time to get into that. But the beauty of this program really is for the people that were in net energy metering that may be installed. They were, or were an early adopter back in 2010, 2011, all the way up until 2015. And for the last seven years felt like they couldn't add to their PV system. And so now is a beautiful time. And this is a really just battery rich program, or I should say credit rich program with a federal tax credit Right now, that's still 26%, a state tax credit that kind of irons out to be, you know, somewhere between maybe 17 to 27%. So we'll call it 22. So you're still getting about 50% back from federal and state tax credits for solar now. So our saying always is best to have done solar yesterday. So really not, it doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense to wait. But what's so great about this program that Hawaiian Electric put out was that this really opens up the door for people that have always wanted to add. Maybe they've picked up, as you mentioned, an electric vehicle over the years. Maybe the house has gotten a little bit bigger. Either they've had some kids or maybe some kids moved back in with mom and dad, with their family. So it's a phenomenal time to basically take advantage of not only putting batteries in and getting a credit, but this also allows you to do a NEM expansion. So you get to do a net energy meter expansion. So somebody could come in and possibly put up another 10 kW worth of photovoltaic, 15 kW worth of uh, photovoltaic, because maybe that electric bill 
that they covered early on was only maybe $150 a month, but now maybe that electric bill is $500 or $600 a month. And that's very real. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think a lot of our business now is folks coming back to us that didn't get enough PV the first time around, or they just started using more power since then. And so they need to add to these NEM systems, these legacy systems up until this battery bonus program, you could not add panels to them. So um, that's a big part of this. Uh, however, if you don't have a NEM system and you're installing a new PV system under a different tariff, uh, CGS or CGS plus, um, you can participate in the battery bonus program. Um, we recommend maybe, well, depending on your usage, getting an extra battery just to to dedicate to this program because you'll need that, that first battery to power your home or maybe even two in some cases to power your home at night. Um, but the point is, you know, I've never seen a program this good for homeowners. I've been doing this for 10 years. Other than NEM, um, this is kind of like NEM 2.0, you know? And so, um, yeah, we're encouraging folks to jump on this while it still lasts because like Scott said, there's only three tranches. And I might point out that this program is benefiting not only Revolution, but all the solar dealers out there. Right. The all of yeah. you are probably going uh, absolutely like gangbusters. And then I would also point out as somebody who sees the larger picture that 50 megawatts ain't gonna cut it. We need at least, I would say, looking down the road, at least 150 uh, megawatts. So good time to be in the, the solar business, I would say. So you know, what, yeah. what's, what's going on with the next slide here? Well, the one thing I wanted to mention too, Howard, was um, well, well, Max is pulling up the slide. Um, there is also something called battery rewards, which is mm, through that good point. Good point. Swell, and so Swell that that really does cater to people that may have installed, as Tom had mentioned, under Customer Grid Supply or Customer Grid Supply Plus uh, or Smart Export. So for people that maybe had done an installation in the last maybe five to seven years that are not part of the NEM, that might be a program that, that they would look at doing. And that's actually a, a credit that comes to that homeowner in the form of a monthly payment. And it's derived based upon how many batteries that you have on the house. So that credit could be anywhere between possibly about $40 a month upwards to $150 to $200 a month, depending on if they've got one or three batteries on the house or more. I think that's called passive income. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we all need more of that. And by the way, Swell is ex not exclusive anymore. I think there's maybe one other PV company that offers it, but Revolution was the first. Um, I'm not sure what the other one is. So it's not available through all contractors, uh, just a handful now. Okay, let's go back to that uh, slide that we were. Well, you had a rooftop slide. Yeah, what, what's going on with this uh, rooftop here, besides being a very beautiful uh, scenery? Well, I, I want to say that that's over in uh, Kailua. Uh, well, I think what we were trying to show here, and I pass it over to Tom, but just a nice installation on a standing seam roof. Um, you know, and it's just, it's just so, we're so proud of seeing the adoption of so much photovoltaic here on the island. I mean, we're so fur we're, we're a lot further ahead per capita than many other states. So it's just really exciting to see everything progress. And I think that these battery programs that Hawaiian Electric Company is embracing right now have really kind of helped push the trajectory of, of where the industry is going to go over the next couple of years. Yeah, you know, we read about Hawaii legs here and Hawaii legs there. We sure ain't lagging in the solar industry and solar storage capacity. Right. Uh, the island of Kauai, uh, usually, especially on a sunny day like today, they shut all their power plants down in the middle of the day, and it's entirely clean energy run, and that is what all the islands are, are shooting for. And thanks to every new installation, we get a little bit uh, closer to that. So nice. I didn't have... Oh, go ahead, uh, Tom. Oh, not to cut you off. I was just saying, I didn't know that. That's amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, just to dovetail off Scott, as Scott would say, um, I think we do lead the nation in PV per capita, don't we? Oh, we're, we, we, we're the we top. Lead, yeah. lead by a factor of two, at least yeah. two. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, 
and you know what really makes a good solar market is unfortunately the cost of power here is ridiculous right we pay the nation's highest rates and uh, that's really part of what drives the market and then our state tax incentives are pretty good um you know everybody all the states get the federal tax credit which was 26 percent um but not all states have a good uh state tax incentive for getting pv um, some states have like a feed and tariff or a similar to a NEM program. Um, but yeah, th those kind of make the perfect storm for a solar market is uh, mm -hmm. price of power being really high and the state tax incentive. Um, since I started though 10 years ago, the state and federal tax incentives haven't gotten any better. If anything, they're going down. So it's it's good to note if you're a homeowner watching that you know, the federal tax credit is going down 4% at the end of this year. So right now, as mentioned, it, it's 26% of the gross cost you'll get back uh, as a tax credit. Starting next year, it's going to be 22%. Um, so that's the reason why you see so much PV in Hawaii is a large part because of these tax credits, you know, and the price of power. Your, your payoff is, is really good here compared to the mainland. Sometimes half the, your ROI will be half the amount of time doing PV here in Hawaii versus on the mainland, maybe in California. Better than half because our average statewide rate for a kilowatt hour right now is 36 cents. Thanks to the very, very, very high price of oil, the average mainland kilowatt hour costs 12 cents. So we're, there's a factor of three to one, but we're running yeah. out of time. What about another beautiful slide, please? What's all this about? <laughs> well, just, just to touch on this, this is exactly sort of what you were talking about, Howard, is what we would call VPP, virtual power plants, right? So that's really what this program is all about, is turning individual homes or homeowners' homes into a power plant, in a sense, that is going to help stabilize the grid, help out your neighbors, just really help what we're doing out here on the island of Oahu. So it's an exciting time to partake in this program because that's basically what's happening. Homeowners putting in one, maybe two, maybe three batteries, adding more PV to their house. And just to touch on it one last time, that might be a, a family where things have changed at their household over the years since they did their first install, or more times than not, it might just be a new purchase, a new family moved into somebody that sold their home. Maybe that was an older couple that moved to a condo. Maybe it was just because two of them lived at the house. So they only covered an electric bill of about $150 a month. New homeowner comes in, has two electric vehicles in the driveway. They've got a $400, $500 electric bill. This is a phenomenal time for them to take advantage of coming in, adding PV, adding a couple batteries, picking up these the federal and state tax credit that Tom was talking about. But then on top of that, I mean, you're talking about an upfront payment from Hawaiian Electric Company of $4,250 per battery, and then another $25 a month per that battery for 10 years. So if you're putting in two batteries on your house, you're talking about $14,500 worth of uh, payments from HECO over the course of 10 years with 8,500 of that upfront. So that really, really helps out that bottom line and the return on investment, as you had mentioned. It's worth noting also, uh anything that HECO draws from the battery for this program, they're going to give you a kilowatt hour for kilowatt hour credit. So if you're a, a name, a NEM system owner, you'll get that credit for the lifetime of the program, which is 10 years. Uh, if you're a CGS or CGS plus customer, you'll get that for the first three years. So, you know, you're getting the 4250 upfront, 3000 amortized over the 10 years, and then these kilowatt hour credits. So even if it, also, it's worth noting, even if it wasn't for the financial incentive, like Scott said, you know, you're contributing to Hawaii going green and reducing your carbon footprint. You know, you're helping out the community. So um, I, I think it's worth it just for that reason. And how about looking at worldwide? Is Hawaii serving as an example here for the rest of the states to follow and indeed for the rest of the world to follow? Absolutely. I believe so. Well, as I know, we, we are virtually ahead of every nation in, in the world. There may be a couple of exceptions. We are. I think there's going to be all eyes on this, uh, you know, on how well this goes as far as the AES coal plant, you know, closing down come September, 
and then the transition of what you know we're trying to do with what we would call VPP uh, virtual power plants. And it's going to be really interesting to see how that shapes up, and hopefully, it's going to set the bar and set the bar high. Mm -hmm. We are have set the bar very very high. Is there any other slide left to show, or did we exhaust the slide? We got about one minute. Oh, oh, you can end end on this one. I'll, I'll pass it to Tom if you wanted to jump on that one, Tom. <laughs> yeah. So what are we looking at here? Uh, P residential PV systems with and without storage right now. Yeah. yeah so okay. Um, so yeah, when I started, you know, 2011, um, there was virtually no storage. Uh, we were just. I mean, there it, it existed and, and you could buy, but it really wasn't worth it because um, it was just for backup purpose. Now, like I said, you need it to power your home at night if you have a new system. Um, so the point is, you know, there's all these systems that we installed and other contractors installed for the last decade that were under the NEM uh, that don't have storage. So I think there's plenty of capacity and plenty of room for folks that already have PV systems to add batteries. And again, going back to this uh, battery bonus program, this is their incentive. This is their reason to kind of get off the couch and, and do it. Um, yeah, all the systems now do come with batteries. I don't know, Scott, do you know what the percentage is out there of um, PV systems that have batteries and ones that don't? Uh, I would probably take a guess that uh, you probably because you had a lot of PV systems early on. So I would, I would say that only about five or 10% of the PV systems or the rooftop solar actually have batteries. That was kind of what that slide was showing in the orange was showing people that have PV. And then in the blue was the ones with the battery uh, yeah. component to it. So we have a lot, that's why Hawaiian capacity. capacity. Yeah. yeah, they put, they put this program out to incentivize people in the NEM to basically come in and put batteries on their house. And on that very cheery note, we must bid fond adieu. Scott Curry, David Wishart, Revolution, you've given us a tremendously optimistic view of the world, Hawaii, little old Hawaii, helping Mother Earth and showing the way for other people to have 100% clean energy. So thank you very much. See you next time, Howard Wig, Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks, Howard. Thanks, Howard. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.